I heard my husband scream outside and say, nurses, come in, my wife has fainted. Natural births, usually the next day you get to go home. I had to stay there for another like three days. So when the baby's ready, the baby just shoots out. Hello, my friends. Um, today I'm gonna talk about my birth story. And it's been so long ago because my daughter is five years old and my son is three already. However, I just realized that I never shared my experience with you guys. And I think it may be helpful to anyone that is, um, you know, either wanting to get pregnant or pregnant or going to deliver soon. Um, so let me try to gather all my memories and try to share as much information as I can with you guys. So I went to a class called Baby, Baby Prep. And with my daughter, I saw an OBGYN and she was really good. Um, <clears throat> so anyways, so what happened when I knew that I was, should I share my, it was a birthing, yeah, my birthing story, right? Yeah, my birth experience. So it wouldn't be the pregnancy experience, the birth experience. Okay, so what happened with my daughter? I'm a first time mother. I've never experienced contractions, but all I know is that within two to five minutes apart, there would be 45 to 60 seconds um, of like a feeling, like a maybe like a, like a contraction feeling, right? So I was aware of that and the day, and then I, I thought that you're supposed to have, you know, your water break first, but some people don't. And I never had my water broken first for both pregnancies. So what happened with Kelly was that when it was, when it was the day that she was to arrive on this earth, I remember at 7 p.m. Um, I started to feel something weird within me. I couldn't explain what it was. Okay, so yeah, so at 7 p.m. I remember after dinner, I started feeling a bit weird. I couldn't explain what it was, so I told my husband and I also called my OBGYN. She told me to just monitor myself. It may or may not be the day of my daughter's arrival. And so I did, and until we fell asleep, and she also told me to make sure I rest a lot. I didn't have my water broken at all. So what happened when I slept was, um, at around like 10, 11, I started feeling weirder and weirder and I can't explain what it was, but I started feeling something underneath, under, under my body, um, on the lower part of my body. And I was like, this is weird, but I didn't think it was contractions. I just thought maybe, I don't know, it was expanding or something. I don't know. I was getting prepared. I couldn't even explain what it was. It was, it was interesting. So anyways, so slowly, slowly after an hour, an hour, an hour, and there became one, became two. And those, I started timing myself and the contractions were real. My husband was sleeping and I didn't want to wake him up beside him because in Vancouver, if you go to the hospital and you are not five centimeters dilated yet, the doctor will tell you to come home and wait until you are. So I didn't want to be overreactive, over nervous, or, you know, making a big deal. But this is the thing, um, my contractions were not normal. The timing of it was very off and it wasn't exactly what the doctor guided me in. So I kept on thinking, no, I'm not even close to being five centimeters dilated, but I was in major, major yum tong um, for a long time, like, and I had to hold it in. I didn't want to wake up my husband and I started getting cold sweats, um, cold hot flashes, cold sweats, hot flashes, and it just felt like really super duper 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 bad menstrual cramps. And then what happened was the hospital told me that to time it and if it's not you still can't go to the hospital yet. So I never did until it was literally like 6 a.m. in the morning. So when, from 7 p.m. all the way till 6 a.m. I was just holding in my pain and I never felt but went to rest. And then I woke up and I was like I can't handle anymore. So when it was finally right I woke up and I went to the shower and I turned on the hot water and I started to spray myself and make myself super duper 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 hot on, the, on my waist area, on my tummy area, just to make myself relax and feel better because I was in so much pain but I was so hungry and because I took a shower my husband heard me and he woke up and he's like Lopal what are you doing 
and I was like, Logong, I think it's time. So my husband woke up and he asked me what, what's going on and I was like, Logong, I think it's time. I think Kelly's gonna come today. And then he was like, oh my God. And then he quickly called his office, you know, called my in-laws because they're gonna drive me to the hospital. My husband called the, the, his office to make sure all the patients know and he's gonna, you know, skip out on work because he's gonna go with me to the hospital. It's our big day. And so what happened was afterwards I got out of the shower and I, we were packing, we, we had our, we already had my um, baby bag prepped, right? My hospital bag prepped, everything was in there already. And um, I went downstairs, man, that's when like, I was already in so much pain, but when I went downstairs, walking down the stairs, it was even worse. But I was so hungry, and I knew that if I didn't eat something, I would not have the strength to push. And so my in-laws came finally. I wouldn't go to the hospital yet because I was so hungry. I told my husband, I told my mother-in-law, I was like, I need to eat something before I go, right? And I can't do handle anything when I'm hungry. I'm just that type of person. And so I asked, if my mother-in-law could make me, I think it was an, an egg sandwich or something. And then my husband, and I also had uh, Cheerios. I was really addicted to Cheerios when I was pregnant. So I ate a bowl and my mother-in-law made me an egg sandwich and I was still hungry. I was still hungry. And so I asked my mother-in-law if she could make me one more and then she did. And, but the thing was, when I went to the washroom, I was bleeding. My mother-in-law was like, you have to go now. When you're, when you're almost like gonna give birth, when you're sitting in a car trying to go get to the hospital on time, that little rocks of bumping, bumpiness during the car ride was so hard to deal with. Like you were just kind of like, oh my God, hurry up, you know, hurry up. I gotta get to the hospital, you know? And then finally, when we arrived, I couldn't even walk anymore because I was in so much pain and my, my husband got a, a, a wheelchair and I sat in there and he wheelchaired me up trying to find the place and I go in there and I have to give them my ID and I'm already like oh my god I can't handle it and then afterwards there was like a Asian nurse and then she came and she recognized who I was like Linda Chong and then she like looked at my reaction and she was like no you got to get into the room now like don't even do any of the papers anymore because she could tell that I was ready. So I went into the hospital and into the into my own room and I was so blessed that you know Vancouver has these big, you know, like individual rooms for you when you're when you're delivering babies. And then my OBG OBGYN finally came and she had to, you know, stick her finger just to see how, how much dilated I was. And when she took it out, she was like, Linda, why did you come so late? You're already eight centimeters dilated. And I was just like, what? You know, I was like, I, I didn't even think I was five yet because I could, I was handling it very well. Well, I was in pain, but I, I could handle it. And then she was like, yep, within an hour or so, you're gonna start pushing. Cause once you're 10, you get to push, right? And so she went out to do a few more of her things and the nurses was prepping me. And man, when you, it, I think it's mind over matter definitely because when I wasn't at the hospital, I wasn't, I wasn't going like in major pain mode. I was still very like calm and collected and just like holding on to my pain. But when I was at the hospital and they tell me that I'm ready almost, then my barrier of strength just went down and I started feeling like this is so painful. Yeah, I started needing those like, I think it's like, what is it? Those masks those like oxygen masks i don't really think they help um but it's kind of like a psycho psychological thing where you kind of feel better so you just kind of breathe it in but it was funny because i kind of got high just breathing in that thing when there, it wasn't even medicine it wasn't any drug or anything it was just i just used that mask the whole time and you know another thing that i used to cope with my pain was um uh, my mother-in-law gave me uh, water, like ice water, like cold water, um, gave me popsicle sticks. And um, that really, I think that really helps because every time during a contraction, I was just like, give me the popsicle, give me the water, you know, or give me the orange juice, whatever it was, right? There were a lot of people in the room, you know, there were nurses, there was my OBGYN, there was my husband holding onto my hand and trying his best to calm me down. 
there was my mother-in-law, my father-in-law was outside waiting for me, my mother was there, my sister was there. And in the end, it was really time to push. I must say, I think I did well. Um, it was so painful. And I just had to push. But when I pushed, I didn't scream. I didn't cry. I was so determined and I was so calm. And you know what I did? The nurse was so nice because I told her to write my daughter's name, Kelly, on the board with a heart circled around it. It was like a whiteboard and I could see her name. And every time I had to like push, I just looked at Kelly, like Kelly's name. And I was like, Kelly, Ugh. and then breathe in, Kelly. Uh, you know, and the only thing I was thinking was I need to make sure that I bring my daughter out safely. And another strength for me was that my mother was there. And so I would look at her and I would just imagine all the pain that and all the hardship that she went through to, to give birth to me, my sister and my brother. And that gave me strength to go on. Also, of course, my husband, he was there and I was just like, you know, we're making this family together and we're going to be together forever, you know. And it's gonna be so exciting to get to meet our little girl, you know, our gift from, from God. And in the end, push, 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 push. You know what it felt like? It felt like I was being burned down there. You know what, you don't even have to push at the end. You know what happens when the baby's ready? The baby just comes out. Like it just shoots out, right? And it's like, it feels like a, wa like a this size watermelon trying to just push out of like a small hole. And, It just felt like it was so painful. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> and then anyways, and then when the baby came out, guess what a special thing that my daughter does did. My daughter used her pinky or used her finger to 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 like pinky Hello. hi to pinky my OBGYN before she came out. And so and also my water broke at that time. So what you know, thank, thanks, thanks God, is that because that watermelon was gonna come out, my, I finally broke my water during that time. And it just, like water, it helped to ease the situation and just smooth in and come out. And there you go, baby Kelly has arrived to this world. Yeah, my daughter, baby Kelly, Kelly Linda, Kelly Linda Leg has arrived to this world. But guess what happens one hour later? So I rest because I just deliver a baby and plus you have to wait for your placenta to come out. So besides just pushing out a baby, you have to also push out your placenta. <gasps> no epidural, no nothing. Okay, it was all fully 100% natural. Um, okay, and plus it was too late anyways. I was eight centimeters dilated already when I went in. and. But guess what? After I rested for an hour, the nurse comes in and she's like, Linda, you have to get up and you have to start going to the washroom and see if you can go to the toilet to go um, to go pee. That's freaky for a just after birth girl because you just had a major experience. So I walked up and I was just like, oh, I'm so freaked out, all right? Once I walked down, holy smoke samoli, it felt like a murder scene. I walked one, two steps and gush, blood was flying over on the ground, you know, like on my, on my blue gown, hospital gown. And I was so freaked out. I was like, I'm bleeding so much. This is normal. And the, the nurse was like, keep walking, keep walking, go to the washroom. We'll clean it up. And I didn't think that was normal, but anyways, I went to the washroom and I started, my husband was helping me, and all of a sudden I was just like, Logo, I'm gonna faint. Oh, I'm not, you know? And I just like, literally, for the first time in my life, I went from like, you know, talking to like, <laughs> you know, like, totally out. But inside I was awake, but outside I was blanked out. Blacked out, I mean, not even blanked out, blacked out. And I heard my husband scream outside and say, nurses, come in, my wife has fainted. He's trying to pat my face, telling me to wake up. The, the nurses try to wake me up and I hear them. And then because I'm literally like a piece of, you know, dead weight, all, the, all four nurses had to carry me one leg and one arm after the other with my husband to bring me back on the bed. Once I brought me back on the bed, I slowly was almost awakening. 
and they said that they had to open the ER room, so emergency room, to do reconstructive surgery on me. Once I heard that, I woke up. Like, I, I woke up. And I was like, no, I can pee. Please, I can pee, give me a chance. And they're like, Linda, you have to calm down. Um, it's, we don't want to do this, but just in case, we got to check, you know. So they had to, they had to open me back up into the birthing position and check me. Man, was it more painful than giving birth? And I had to get, get that oxygen mask again, and I was like, <sighs> like that, right? And natural births, usually the next day you get to go home. I had to stay there for another, like, three days. You know, like, it was like a C-section or something, but I didn't get a C-section. Anyways, I was really lucky when the OBGYN came and checked me again after the nurses checked me. Very painful, but they said that we'll just wait and see how you do the next day and see how you do the next day. If you start unswelling, then you'll get to, you don't have to do anything. No surgery, no nothing, you can go home. And praise God, thank you very much. Everything was slowly by hour dying back down. So that, that was my first birth experience. I hope it doesn't scare you in giving a natural birth. I'm not trying to freak you out. It didn't, it didn't affect me because my second birth, I was even, you know, even more like determined and even more like uh, confident that I could deliver my baby safely and I could, you know, handle it and do it well. Oh my lordy lord. Um, after saying all that story, it just brought back so many memories. You know what, I'm so thankful that I got to experience giving birth to my daughter. Um, it really empowers you. It really, really does because because I always thought I was scared of giving birth. I always thought I would be scared of pregnancy. I even remember when I was 20 something, I had dreams of myself being pregnant and I was freaked out because it just, it felt so like scary because you have to like give birth to something, you know? But when you, when you get to experience this, you realize that when you're focused, when you're determined, when you're on a mission, when you believe in yourself and your body, and you love something enough, that you don't mind all that pain, all that suffering, all that sacrifice, you know, like, you just, it, 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 it means, it, it doesn't mean anything. What means something is my daughter being born, and this time of my life with my husband, me making a family, that's the beauty of it and there's it's just so I, i'm just so thankful like although i wished it didn't have to have the later half where it was so freaky you know but yeah and it, i mean it took me another two months to walk properly but seriously i wouldn't change it for the world and yeah awesome it's just awesome i wish everyone to have a good smooth delivery and if it isn't i mean everyone's so unique and everyone has their own story but i'm just saying you know mummies out there i support you and i'm so proud of you and i know that you can do it um, no matter what type of birth story you choose or you have um yeah just bravo to you guys and um the hard part is the taking care of and teaching them and, and guiding them. Okay, can you get some water? Huh? Okay, mama mama law. Really quickly, really quickly. Hello, I'm back. So anyways, I just wanted to say thank you so much for listening to my story and I hope I didn't gross you out or scare you. Um, that was not my meaning. Um, anyways, add oil in everything you do. <laughs> and uh, thank you from the bottom of my heart for liking my videos and supporting me. Bye bye. And next video is Jared's birth story. You guys can sit here and listen to my story, okay? Shh. Sit, sit there, sit there. Quiet, quiet. So, and then my husband heard me and he went to the ba, washroom. Ba, 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 